So let's new viewers and welcome to biology access. In today's class, we're looking at translation. In case you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe and click on the notification button so that you'll be notified anytime we post new videos. Looking at the process of translation, translation is if the synthesis of protein using information of RNA. The process whereby R, through the genetic information present in RNA, we are able to produce protein. So the synthesis of protein using the information on RNA is what we call translation. Translation. Now, translation basically involves three steps. The first step is activation of amino acid. Activation of amino acid. Activation of amino acid. Now, amino acids are present in the cells. We must not forget that translation takes place in the cytoplasm. If you can remember from the video of transcription, we said that after the formation of mRNA, the mRNA will leave the nucleus into the cytoplasm. So the process of translation takes place in the cytoplasm, while transcription takes place in the nucleus. Now back to translation. The first step is activation of amino acid. Activation of amino acid. In the cytoplasm, we have several amino acids that are, that, that are inside the cytoplasm. However, these amino acids need to be activated. How will they be activated? For the activation of amino acid, it requires ATP and enzymes. For activation of amino acid, we need ATP and enzymes. And the name of this enzyme is amino exide synthase. Amino exide synthase. So these two will be combined together. And we have the equation here. We have the amino acid plus ATP plus enzymes. Amino acid plus ATP plus enzymes. When all these three combine together, it will leak, it will produce amino exide complex. Amino exide complex, also known as activated amino acid. Activated amino acid. So when a, a, amino acid plus ATP plus the, this enzyme, which is known as amino exide synthase, comes together, it will produce amino exide amino acid complex, which you can, which can also be called activated amino acid. And this activated amino acid can be, can be represented using this uh, inscription below. AA, uh, AA uh, I think, ANP and amino acid. So all these things together are what we call the activated amino acid. And then, then there will be a release of two molecules of inorganic phosphate. Don't forget, in ATP, we have three phosphate, adenosine triphosphate, three phosphate. But here we have AMP, that's monophosphate. We have one phosphate here. So we are left with two. The two will be released as inorganic phosphate. So we have AA, ANP, and E. Together, they are called activated amino acids. This is the first step of translation activation of amino acid. For activation of amino acid, we need ATP and enzymes. So when ATP, enzymes, and amino acid come together, they form amino acid complex. And this is the amino acid complex. The second step, the second step is the transfer of activated amino acid to tRNA. The transfer of activated amino acid to tRNA. Now the activated amino acid complex, this complex will now be transferred to tRNA. It will be transferred to tRNA. Now we have an equation here. We have the equation here. A, activated amino acid plus tRNA. After that, what will happen? The amino acid will now be attached to tRNA the amino acid will be attached to tRNA, then the AMP will be released, and the enzymes will also be released. The second step is the transfer of the activated amino acid to tRNA. The amino acid, the amino acid activated complex 
in the first step will be brought to we attach to trna as you can see in this equation we attach to trna amino uh, amino acid that beta complex attached to trna when they attach to trna we will now have the, the product will be amino acid plus amino acid attached to TRNA, TRNA and AMP will be released, then the exons will also be released. That is the second step of transcription, of translation rather. That is the second step of translation. The first step is activation of amino acid. The second step is the transfer of activated amino acid to TRNA. The second, the third step is protein synthesis protein synthesis. Under protein synthesis, we have three subdivisions. Under protein synthesis, we have three subdivisions. The first division is assembly of ribosomal subunits. Assembly of ribosomal subunits. One of the organelles of the cells that helps in protein synthesis is a ribosome. A ribosome. If you come from the knowledge of cells and organelles, we note that ribosome helps in protein synthesis. And don't forget in translation, what we want to synthesize is protein. So because it's protein, ribosome will be involved. And in ribosome, we have two subunits. We have the larger subunit, and this, we have the smaller subunit and the larger subunit. Larger sub, smaller subunit and larger subunit. In the smaller subunit, we have, in the smaller subunit, we have one binding site. And that is the mRNA binding site. In the smaller subunit, we have just only one binding site, and that is mRNA binding site. In the larger subunit, we have three binding sites. We have the amino acid binding site, we have the peptide formation site, and we have the exit site. It is always represented by APE or EPA. These are the binding sites of the larger ribosomal subunit. Don't forget, we are on the top step. We are the top step, which is protein synthesis. And I said under protein synthesis, we have three steps. The first step is assembly of ribosomal subunit. And I said that ribosomal subunit have two subunits: the smaller subunit and the larger subunit. The smaller subunit has one binding site, and that is the amine, uh, uh, that is the mRNA binding site. And the larger subunit have three binding sites. We have A representing the amino acid binding site, B representing the peptide formation, and E representing the exit site. Now, these two subunits will now combine together. We now bind, we now join together. Like this, you can see they have joined together here. They are joined together. So when they are, they are now joined together, now what will help to join them together is magnesium ion. So the function of magnesium ion is to help in the assemblage or in the joining together of the two ribosomal subunits. Of the two ribosomal subunits. Of the two ribosomal subunits. The second step in protein synthesis is attachment of mRNA. Attachment of mRNA. The mRNA produced during the process of translation, we attach to the mRNA binding site of the ribosomal subunit. Remember that while we're looking at the assemblage or the assembly of two ribosomal subunits, we said that the smaller ribosomal subunit has just only one binding site. And that binding site is the mRNA binding site. So the mRNA will come and attach to that binding site like this. The mRNA will attach to the mRNA binding site of the smaller ribosomal ribosomal sub unit. That is the second step under protein synthesis. Now, the final step is polypeptide synthesis. Polypeptide synthesis. Polypeptide synthesis. Now, what happened? What will happen under polypeptide synthesis 
is that uh, T R N A we bring activated mRNA. Don't forget that when we, when we started looking at translation, we said that after activation of amino acid, activated amino acid, we attach to tRNA. That was the second step. We attach to tRNA. Now that uh, amino acid that is attached to tRNA, tRNA will now bring that amino acid to this site. It will bring that, TR, that amino acid to the mRNA. We bring it to the mRNA. And the tRNA will read the code on the mRNA. It will read the code on mRNA. Now, there's an exception here. There's an exception here. All amino acid, all amino acid will come to the amino oxide binding site of the larger ribosomal subunit, except the start codon, which is AUG. AUG will come to the polypeptide site, which is P. AUG will come to P because AUG is the start codon. So the first amino acid, which represents AUG codon, will come to P. We come to P. Why others we come to A? Others we come to. It is only the start codon that we come to. So tRNA, tRNA, we bring the amino acid to this site and read the code on mRNA. If you read, once you read the code on mRNA, it will drop the uh, amino acid and then tRNA will be released. Don't forget, this site is the exit site. This site is the exit site. So once the, the, uh, once the RNA brings the activated amino acid, if it is for the start codon, it will come to the P region. Once it comes to the P region, it drop the, AA, it drop the amino acid. From there, tRNA will be released. Then another RNA will bring down another amino acid to this time around, to the A region. Once that, once it drop it, it will be released. It will, it will be released. It will exit. Another amino acid. Will, they will keep bringing amino acid. Keep bringing amino acid to this site until it it will get to the stop codon, which is U A G. I remember that the stop codon is also known as nonsense codon because it's no coding for any specific protein because it's not coding for any specific protein because it's not coding for any specific so this process of tRNA bringing amino, amino acid to the bringing amino acid to the mRNA will continue the process will continue until there is a stop codon until there is a stop codon. If you don't know what a stop codon is, I will advise you to go and read about genetic codes, where we have the start codon and the stop codon. So this process will continue. This process will continue, continue, continue until there is a stop codon. Until there is a stop codon. Now, and after there is a stop codon, we will now have something like this: amino acid. Amino acid, amino acid one, amino acid two, amino acid three, amino acid four. And each of the amino acids are linked together by peptide bonds. They are linked together by peptide bond. This amino acid A, amino acid one, two, three, four. So when we have many amino acids linked together, that will lead to the formation of protein. That will lead to the formation of protein. Now let's quickly look at this process of polypeptide synthesis again. Let's look at the process of polypeptide synthesis again. We'll see that tRNA will bring the activated amino acid to the binding site. We bring it to the mRNA that is attached to the smaller ribosomal subunit. It will bring tRNA will bring the AA, which is the amino acid, to the mRNA. But it, and I remember I told you that for the first, for the start codon, 
which is AUG. AUG will come to the polypeptide site. If you come to the polypeptide site, while every other amino acid will come to the amino acid binding site. So tRNA will keep bringing amino acid to the we keep bringing amino acid to this ribosomal subunit. They will keep amino acid, they will keep bringing it, pre giving and as you bring the amino acid, it will read the codon on mRNA. Once you feed the codon on mRNA, it will be released. That's why this place is called the exit site. This exit site is for the release of tRNA. Because tRNA, once tRNA drops the amino acid, it will be separated from the amino acid and it will leave through the exit site. Another tRNA will bring another amino acid to the next to the first amino acid then there will be another amino acid the process will continue like that like that until there is a stop codon until there is a stop codon in summary in summary let's summarize the process of translation the process of translation involves three steps the first step is activation of amino acid the second step the first step is uh, activation of amino acid. The second step is the transfer of activated amino acid on tRNA. And the third step is protein synthesis. Under protein synthesis, we have three sub steps, three subdivisions. The first one is the assembly of the two ribosomal subunits. The second one is the attachment of mRNA on the attachment of mRNA on the smaller ribosomal subunit and the last step is polypeptide synthesis polypeptide synthesis that is the process of translation which involves the synthesis of protein from the synthesis of protein from RNA if you have any questions or comments drop it at the comment section thanks for viewing